hi guys and welcome back to another video i'm feeling so nice and cuddly in my matching tracksuit so cute i feel so warm um it's getting into the colder months here in new zealand so definitely going to be making good use of this outfit for sure anyways in today's video we've got a very special request from one of my very loyal subscribers called chuck he is very interested in tornadoes and kind of stopping tornadoes and kind of doing his own research about how to stop tornadoes in the future i have checked out one of his videos already and i will link it up here and throughout the video i will be linking all of my different tornado videos along here so keep an eye out for those but yeah without any further ado we are going to get straight into today's video thank you so much chuck and i'm interested to see what more we learn today Right, part two. So again. Hello, my name is Chuck Mancino. Check out part one if you are interested. I'm at the Hands-On Science Center here in Tullahoma, Tennessee. The date is the 26th of February, 2013. This is part two of the Stopping a Tornado series, part two. The objective is stopping the tornado while it's on the ground. Now, if you remember in Stopping a Tornado, part one, it was using computational fluid dynamics and two airborne masers to um, disrupt the pattern before the tornado Hit actually the ground. touched down. Mm -hmm. Before it actually touched down. Mm -hmm. And this is the second part here of a three-part series. Okay, objective is stopping the tornado once it's on the ground. Method I'll be using is one is a stationary maser. And this is just all example. Second is a mobile maser. Uh, masers, uh, think of your microwave oven uh, type of, um, they have magnetrons in there. They uh, polarize the uh, molecules and heat them up. Yeah, I'll go, I, I went into that to part one. Mm -hmm. We're going to it later in depth in part three. What our objective is is disrupt the, the vortex pattern. The vortex is already established here. The tornado has it's already the touched down. It's already touched down. The to and now it's a tornado, and this is <laughs> it, it, this is the point here that we that we uh, neutralize it on the ground where it's not destructive. This would be insane. We use the microwave pulse that I was talking about with the maser. Use weather math models, uh, computational fluid dynamics, which I've talked about earlier before, and uh, this is much more possible now with the Yellowstone supercomputer in Wyoming that just come on board uh, in the fall, winter last year. So this right here is another possible factor that can make this whole thing happen. My first, my first video and the second video, that's the key thing right there is that computer. Okay, um, just real briefly, we have the tornado here that's already touched down. We have what we're protecting. The house. Hypothetically a house. <laughs> And the way we'll look at this is... Oh my gosh, as imagine. Wright Brothers' first, first flight. Uh, when the Wright Brothers were flying for the first time, they were not trying to build a 747. They were trying to build an F-15. They weren't trying to break the speed of sound, go to the moon, ET scene. They were just trying to show that proven flight by man could happen. That was their first flight. That was their only objective. And that's all, that's all this is. It's just... It's just a basic bare method. Uh, I have a technological demonstrators that I have in the works, and, and you can actually, like, like at a hands-on science center here, you can actually watch the vortexes dissipate and be, dis be wow. able to we'll get to that later. Um, pretty here, we have the, uh, the, mat the, ma the math models are already established. Computational fluid dynamics math models what will happen, this will, the, the vortex will touch down, and then the, there will be a, um, a model already in the computer system itself. Crazy. That determines the height, the width, the speed of the tornado, the horizontal speed that's traveling on land, vertical speed as the vortex comes down, 
uh, vortex wind speed, what's actually happening, different layers, different levels of the tornado itself, uh, the temperature inside the vortex, and outside. How would it do that? <laughs> and the rotation direction. Just automatically? This is very important, because mostly in North America it goes counterclockwise. Sometimes it goes clockwise. And that's it's so interesting. Itself. So we've got to determine that right from the beginning. But, but what, what will happen, we'll hit it from two areas. We'll say, like in a, in a large city, you have a microwave tower. It's stationary, of course, and it's very high. And then you'll have this part plays on the stationary maser here, right up in here. Uh, this is the maser. Mm. This is a waveguide. This is what you would call a barrel as far as aiming the, uh, the uh, microwaves. Here is the mobile, the mobile oh, maser yeah. here. And again, this is the maser and this is the waveguide. And what will happen, we'll hit it from two different areas. One, the taller st uh, stationary maser will hit it high the funnel up high. If you had another tower here, it would be hitting it here and here. Disrupt the pattern. How far away could these to back it up or hit. reinforce it? You'd need a lot of the towers, right? Masers would be close by in close proximity. Within mm -hmm. a safe distance. But in a close in a close proximity to where it could affect the last fourth or third, third or fourth uh, of the cloud uh, touching down. So with a combination of these two here, we can disrupt the pattern enough. It's all about the disrupting the pattern. And uh, destroy the st in inner structure of it. Uh, the key thing about these are mobile. These are mobile. And depending on, on the, the, um, the path, the, the, vertic uh, the horizontal path of it, these could be stationed at different places at different times. So if this thing reoccurs somewhere else and comes down reforms again after it's anticipated, it can be addressed with the second tower and, and other units just like that. And I know this is just a concept, this is a basic idea, but um, we've hit it from, in our two videos, we've hit it from disrupting the pattern that makes up the vortex or, or the tornado itself, the funnel cloud coming down to a tornado. We disrupt the pattern with two 747s uh, before, the, before the tornado even existed. It was disrupted. Here is disrupt on part two, it's disrupted. It'd be hardest to do when it's on the it's ground. Moving, and then all of a sudden it gets into a populated area. These kick in, in theory and it disrupts the vortex and the cloud and it's everyone's safe. Um, I know and that's what we want. This is just a very basic idea. I know all that's involved, but what I'm trying to do is presenting one and presenting two is to put, a, put an ideal out there. Just put an ideal and just somebody run with it. Uh, this thing will not happen overnight. I do believe it will happen, or I would not be up here. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> again, my name is Chuck Mangino. I'm at the Hands On Science Center, and this is part two of stopping a tornado. And we're trying to meet our objective of stopping the tornado. Wow. The Thank you. Yay. <gasps> yeah, so it seems like, oh, I'm shaking the table here. Oops seems like it's obviously a much harder situation when the tornado has already hit the ground it's harder to stop it it'd be very complicated though isn't it like but i really like how people come up with ideas and theories um i think it's so important um like chuck said so someone can run with it or get an idea or it sparks another idea or someone actually tries it you know it's so important for science that we come up with theories even if it's the most basic of theories um you never know what could come of it um but yeah wouldn't it be amazing if we had a t-1000 
technology that could stop tornadoes. And of course, like Chuck says, it is going to happen. So if you're a scientist or is it called like a weatherologist? I don't know. And this video sparks ideas in your head. Like Chuck said, run with that. But yeah, good on you, Chuck, for always, um, you know, pushing the boundaries on situations like this. Like this world has to progress and you making theories like this are so important in the world's progression. Um, I'm interested to see what everyone thinks about this theory. I think it would be very complicated to do and expensive. It would all have to do with funding. I don't know. I feel like the world is all about money, right? So people would be like, is it cheaper to just let these towns be ruined or to put in these huge technology things and keep them up to date throughout the year? You know, ma maintenance is what I was trying to say. Maintenance. Because um, I feel like this would be so expensive such an expensive project and I'm interested to know where those stationary mazes would be like how far away from each other do they have to be because obviously the USA is a big place Tornado Alley is a huge place also it would just cost a lot I feel like you know it's crazy it's crazy but let me know what you guys think about this video thank you so much chuck for sending through this video and for your wonderful work and theories um but yeah thank you guys so much for watching today's video i'm just letting you guys know um i'm taking a break for this week i've got another guaranteed video request going up sometime this week but um apart from that i'm just gonna take a break just to relax a little bit and get my stuff back together um but thank you guys so much for watching today's video and i will see you all in my next video bye guys Mwah.